This is my seventh stop today. And I'll be honest with you, as we're rolling down the, the highway and I'm going, really? One more? Jasper County? We're Democrats? And uh, I would pull up and I see this nice crowd out in front. And I think, well, look, there's two or three dozen people here, maybe. And then they say, well, there's a bunch inside. And then I walk. Watch them, they come out, and they come out. It was like a clown car in there. People kept coming. And I will tell you, I have the same feeling. Uh, with this kind of turnout on a very hot afternoon, on a Monday, no less, um, I feel great about where we are in this campaign. And I know why you're here. I know why you're here. Because you feel it, don't you? Yeah. You feel it, but there's something big happening. I don't know which one of them is going to win the primary, but they're three of a kind, one and the same. <laughs> one of them has been endorsed by the Tea Party Express, the largest Tea Party group uh, out of California. The second one has been endorsed by Freedom Works, probably the largest Tea Party group in the country. Uh, originally, they're run by Dick Army from down in Texas. And the third one, not to be outdone, has been endorsed by Michelle Bachman. <laughs> now these three candidates are doing everything they can to run as hard as they can to the far right. These three candidates make John Ashcroft look like a liberal. <laughs> these three candidates think it should be my way or the highway instead of why don't we compromise, get together and build some highways. These three candidates I think the most important thing we have to do is turn out the lights on the federal government entirely. And really don't do anything at the federal government except maybe national defense. Now, I don't think I need to tell the people of Joplin why the federal government's important. Amen. that came from Washington in the days after and the weeks after and the months after as we all together watched in awe as all of you banded together linking arms regardless of party regardless of label uh, to put this community back together but some of the glue that held you together were things like FEMA and the SBA and CDBC and uh, the block grant money that goes to Jeff City that then the governor brought down here, all federal dollars. Over 250 million federal dollars, getting close to 300 million federal dollars, have flown, have come into Joplin to help. And that's the way it should be after a disaster. Now, what do my opponents see when it comes to federal government? There's three big ones I want you to remember. The first one is Medicare. They want to privatize it. What does that mean? No. 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 That means they want seniors to get some money from the government, and with that money, they can go on the private insurance market and buy insurance. Now, can you envision what that's going to work, how that's going to work? Can you envision the seniors arm wrestling insurance companies to get their medical bills paid? Can you envision what the premiums would be for someone like my mother who's got three chronic illnesses, been in the hospital three times in the last 90 days? What do you think they charge her a month for health insurance? So that absolutely is not what Medicare is supposed to be. It's supposed to be so you don't worry about whether or not you can get health care when you're old. Here, here. Two, they want to get the federal government out of another program, and that's Social Security. They want to privatize Social Security. Now, what does that mean? Well, first, it means taking the word security out of the phrase Social Security, because you're not going to have that anymore. But imagine what actually would happen. Let's think about it for a minute. Let's assume we privatized Social Security. And let's assume that we did this 20, 30 years ago, and somebody took their money, and instead of paying into the Social Security Trust Fund, they put it in a, a fund on Wall Street. Oh, and let's just assume that the firm they put it in, whether it's Bernie Madoff or somebody else, tanked. And they're 78, 82, 84 years old, and they lose everything. What do we do with those people? Do we 
tell them they're out of luck? Do we tell them we're not going to feed them? Do we tell them we're not going to help them with a roof over their head? Or do we have to pick up and then make up for their mistakes in terms of their investments? Privatization of Social Security is one of the worst ideas I've ever heard. One of the worst ideas. on top and this is a kicker okay why does the rest of the world admire us so much well the rest of the world admires us so much because in my family there's certainly never been a lawyer and I finished undergrad school and I had a little bit of loans and I've been working as a waitress and I wanted to go to law school and my family didn't have the money for it so I got a student loan for law school and continued to work many many hours as a waitress every week and work my way through law school as a waitress with student loans and you know how come I could get that student loan? Because the federal government backed it up. So if you want to take the federal government out of student loans and privatize it, which is what my opponents say, we, we need the private competition. We don't need the federal government. And in fact, one of my opponents said it was like third degree, third stage of cancer of socialism, the federal government involved in student loans. Now think about that a minute. I've had three 17 years old, three 17 year olds, and I wouldn't loan money to any of them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many 17 year olds you loan money to, but I don't think very many of them. So let's assume you've got a young man or woman that just graduated from the Joplin High School. I was at that graduation, it was wonderful. And let's assume their family can't afford to send them to college. So they walk down here to the bank if we privatize it and say, well, I'm 17. I don't have any money, I don't have any skill, I don't have any assets, I don't have any credit history. Would you give me about 20 grand to go to college? <laughs> and what do you think that bank's going to say? Gonna laugh. The bank's going to say no. <laughs> and if their parents can afford to sign for the loan, then their parents can afford to send them to college. So who goes to college under that scenario? The rich. The rich kids go to college. And who doesn't go to college? Everybody else. And what happens is we become the kind of country we've never been. A country with the haves and the have-nots, with nothing in between. That first rung of the ladder that the federal government backstopping student loans is all about, that's what's made us so special, is that our kids could do something maybe we didn't do, or their kids could do something that they didn't do. And there is that opportunity, that chance. And there's nothing evil about the federal government backstopping student loans. I paid mine back, and the vast majority of kids who get them do. And it gets kids into a school where they can learn and earn and provide the American dream for themselves and for those who come behind them. And that's why it's so important that when we make up our minds in November, we make sure our friends know the contracts. Now, I am proud to tell you, and some of you get irritated with it, I'm a moderate. They ranked us from 1 to 100, the National Journal, a Republican-leaning organization, I might add. They ranked us from 1 to 100 on liberal and conservative. On the liberal list, I was number 50. On the conservative list, I was number 51. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I say that is because Missouri isn't all one way or another. In fact, one of the reasons Missourians liked Harry Truman, because you know what, they didn't agree with him all the time. There were times that Harry Truman was so unpopular, I mean, it was unbelievable how unpopular he was. But you know why Missourians liked him? They may not have agreed with him, but he just said it. And he wasn't afraid to make people mad. He wasn't afraid to have courage. He wasn't afraid to try to move this country. Do you think it was easy when he integrated the armed services? Do you think that was an easy move for him? No. No, it wasn't. And it was not popular. But he did it. And you know what the American people ended up thinking? The guy's got guts. And that's really what this is about. Whether or not you're going to be on one end or the other. we got plenty of those in Washington. What we need more of are those people who are willing to compromise in the middle.
example after example where I have teamed up with my Republican colleagues and moved the ball forward on important things in terms of fiscal discipline. Whether it's John McCain and Jim DeMint fighting earmarks and winning, by the way, I was one of the only Democrats to fight earmarks in Washington, or whether it was Jeff Sessions from Alabama that I worked with on spending caps to put a cap on how much federal spending could occur, or whether it's just recently when two of the most talked about candidates for vice president of the Republican Party came to me and asked me to work with him on legislation. Marco Rubio came and said, will you work with me on legislation, making sure that the UN is not controlling the internet? And I said, you bet I will. And just a few weeks ago, Rob Portman, who might actually be the vice presidential candidate in the Republican Party, came to me and said, will you work with me on a bill with ta on tariffs to make sure our manufacturers can continue to grow and thrive in this country? And I said, you bet I will. And by the way, I'm not afraid of doing that. Now, there are some in my party that thinks that somehow makes you less pure. I'll tell you what I think it makes me. I think it makes me a Missourian. That's what I think. So please know there's a lot at stake here. I don't think, I don't know, what do you think Harry Truman would say about the Tea Party? <laughs> do you think he'd have do you think he'd have some bad words to say? Maybe some words that shouldn't be say it, said in mixed company, especially on Sunday. And I'll tell you what, this is Harry Truman's seat. And I am awfully honored to to, to, to sit in it and to sit at his desk desk on the United States Senate floor. And I have worked very hard to clean up contracting, um, as he did after World War II. The war profiteering was really where he cut his teeth. And I've worked hard on contracting as a former auditor. I've worked really hard on the veterans' issues and cleaning up the heartbreaking incompetence at Arlington National Cemetery and at Walter Reed. And even here in Missouri, the work we've done at John Cochran and the work we've done in Columbia and the work we've done in Kansas City. And even simple things like making sure people can get reimbursed, veterans can get reimbursed for their mileage if they have to drive and see the doctor. I am proud of all those things. I do know this. I do know this. Harry Truman would not want this seat filled by someone who thinks compromise is a dirty word and who doesn't think common sense is something that we should value in this job. since October on the TV. Uh, there's been about seven or eight million dollars worth of anonymous money that's come into Missouri and you've seen it on TV. We don't know who's paying for those ads, but I'll just tell you one thing for sure. If Missourians knew who was paying for those ads, they'd be proud of me. They'd say, you've made the right enemies, Claire. You've made the right enemies. The people who want to take me out are the people who know I think it's ridiculous that we're giving tax dollars to big oil. Why are we giving them checks? They're plenty rich on their own. Why do we, they need corporate welfare? I know that. But those TV commercials, I don't care what Citizens United said, corporations aren't people. There are not people. Corporations only have one purpose. That's to make money. And I guarantee you that's not what people are. And the difference in this election is not going to be how much money's on television spewing lies. The difference in this election is going to be people. Because at the end of the day, you guys, this is not about me. It really isn't. It is about you. It's about you and your families and your kids and whether or not we're going to hold on to a government that reflects our values and what we want our country to be instead of a very narrow, rigid ideology that says that government is the enemy and must be destroyed at all costs, no matter what price of human discomfort is paid in the process. And that's what this is about. And I will tell you, if you will talk to Morgan and talk to our other friends up here and sign up for shifts, we got thousands of phone calls to make. We've got thousands of doors to knock on. We are going to find those voters in Jasper County that want to hold on to Medicare, hold on to Social Security, hold on to college loans, and who don't want to say my way or the highway, those who say, you know what, let's go out and build some more highways with compromise and working together. Thank you guys very much.